One of my absolute favorite ways to catch a bass is flipping and pitching heavy cover. Whether that be stumps and laydowns, wooden docks, or grass lines, I absolutely love that hand-to-hand -hand combat with big bass. And last year, I made a video where I talked about five big mistakes a lot of anglers make while they're flipping and pitching. And today, I wanna to talk about five more mistakes that I know a lot of guys are making. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. One of the best things about Sportsman's Outfitters. They are family owned. There's some really good guys that work there and I love supporting companies like that. Not only that, but you can actually save a lot of money by shopping at Sportsman's Outfitters. One of my favorite flipping and pitching baits is a Missile Baits D-Bomb. Most places you look online, you're gonna see that pack of baits going from $4.70 to $5. At Sportsman's Outfitters, right now it's $3.99. So it's about a dollar savings per pack. If you buy 10 packs, you can save 10 bucks, which means you can spend more money on on lures or buy yourself a nice fat juicy cheeseburger so if you guys would like to help support the bass fishing hq channel click those links for sportsmansoutfitters.com down below in the description mistake number one when it comes to flipping and pitching is you cannot be too noisy when you are on the boat or on land this is something that i actually talked about in that other video but i really want to sit here and almost pontificate about it because i think that it is so very important and i think it can get you a lot more bites through the course of a day if you are simply as stealthy as you can now a few things that i like to do when i'm being stealthy in a boat simply turn off my electronics i love using my hummingbirds to catch fish but when i am flipping and pitching visible structure and cover that i can see where i really don't need my electronics i'm going to turn them off or at least put them in standby mode this will stop the pinging of all the different transducers and it makes you way more stealthy in the water especially in today's age where everybody has a lot of electronics on their boat the other thing that i really like to do involves my trolling motor. I think that this is one of the most important things and that is put your trolling motor on a constant speed or if you don't have a constant speed button at least keep your foot on the trolling motor making it go at all times. I have a Minn Kota Altrex trolling motor. There's a button on top of it where I can hit it and it just turns a blade on and it goes at a constant speed. There's also another button that is an autopilot. I can click it and it'll actually keep me going in the exact same direction no matter even if the wind kind of pushes me off course. It will keep me going in the same direction. I use this all the time when I am flipping and pitching from the boat. Now I keep my blade spinning at a very low speed usually at about a two or three. That really allows me to hit every piece of cover that I'm trying to flip and pitch, but that constant speed makes you way more stealthy in the water. If you are constantly getting on your trolling motor and off your trolling motor and on it, sound travels extremely well in the water and you are going to alert every bass probably within 50 yards that there is a boat close by. Now, in a lot of cases, bass don't care. You can still go out there and catch fish, but if you are putting your trolling motor on that constant speed, I'm telling you what, you will get a lot more bites even behind other anglers. It's something that I always, 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 always do. Now, if you are fishing from the bank, I used to pond fish all the time. I still do a little bit. And approaching targets from the bank is really, really important. You want to be cat-like out there. You don't want to be stomping on the bank as you're getting close to maybe a lay down because you are going to alert the fish that someone is approaching. They can feel that vibration of you stomping. So being stealthy from the bank is also something that I really like to do. Now, mistake number two is not swimming your flipping and pitching bait back to you. This is something that has got me so many bites over my career in fishing that I, I, I couldn't even count them. I used to fish with a guy back in college who used to tell me, you catch way more fish swimming a bait back to you than anyone that I know. And that is because I intentionally do this. This is something that I learned from reading Bassmaster Magazine probably over 10 years ago. And I remember reading this Bill Lowen article where he talked about swimming a tube back to him after he had flipped and pitched it in a bush. And after that, I started doing this with all my flipping and pitching baits, tubes, beaver style baits, jigs. Every time I flip an area, I will swim that bait back to me or swim it through the cover. And there are so many times where a bass is staring at your bait 
in there when you flip it in a brush pile or a lay down log. And as soon as you start swimming that thing back to you, they'll actually come up there and get it. But if you go really, really fast, you actually might miss out on that fish. So be intentional about swimming that bait. And I do this a lot. I might see a, a lay down log and I just pitch that bait up to that lay down log and swim it right there. Sometimes you will find days where you actually catch more fish swimming that bait back to you where it actually makes you change lures. You might end up going with a spinner bait or a, a chatter bait or actually just continuing to swim that bait instead of flip it and pitching. So anytime you're fishing the bank, swim that bait back to you through the cover and you'll be surprised how many more bass you will catch. Now, speaking of catching bass, this actually brings me to mistake number three, and that is when you catch a fish, put the brakes on. This is something that I see a lot of guys that simply don't do it. When, when they catch one, they kind of keep their boat drifting down and they don't continue to fish that area really, really hard. Anytime that I catch a fish, actually whether or not I'm flipping and pitching, but definitely when I'm flipping and pitching the bank, I put my raptors down into the water. I put them down and I will pick that area apart. And something that I learned growing up in a kid with a pond in my backyard, I was super blessed, I never, hardly ever saw one bass by itself. Almost every time that I would see bass in this pond, there would be a little wolf pack of two or three of them. And the same thing happens when I'm fishing a lot of clear bodies of water. You will see wolf packs of bass. Well, the same thing happens when you're fishing muddy water. There is little wolf packs of bass that are in the water. So if you flip and pitch into a log and you catch one, Put the brakes down, put your raptors down, and immediately flip and pitch right back into that exact same spot. And you will be surprised at times how many bass you can catch in a really small section. Now this is even more important if you are flipping and pitching during the spring, because a lot of times you may be fishing dirty water where you can't see fish that are actually on beds, but a lot of fish in the spring are on beds. You flip in there, you catch a little one pound buck, and then you flip back in there and you actually will catch a lot bigger fish, that female, that is on that bed. So anytime you catch a fish, put the brakes on. Now, mistake number four when it comes to flipping and pitching is don't overlook patterns within patterns. This happens all the time on a lot of bodies of water that we fish. We, we're going down the bank, we catch one on a piece of wood. We think, oh, the bass are on every piece of wood in here. But sometimes there's something very specific about that piece of wood, which is why you got bit. Maybe it's on a harder bottom, or maybe it's a bigger log instead of a, the little brush that we see along the bank. Or maybe it's because it was really close to a bluegill bed. A lot of times there are these little patterns within patterns while you're flipping and pitching that if if you pick up on them, you can start being a lot more efficient and stop wasting so much time out there flipping and pitching every single piece of cover. This may be exactly where the fish are positioned on a piece of cover. You may see that most of the bites that you get are actually on the very ends of a lay down log. Instead of at the very base of it, they're at the very end. So instead of constantly flipping and pitching the base and working it all the way out, you can go to each of the ends of every lay down that you find and only flip and pitch those lay down ends. So really try to recognize the patterns within the patterns. Now moving on to mistake number five. This is one that I think we are all guilty of at times times and that is do not over complicate your flipping and pitching baits. This is something that we do pretty much with every single lures. We over complicate it. Now I actually talked about this point in my other flipping and pitching video that I'm going to leave linked right here. So if you guys want to watch that one and, and see why you shouldn't over complicate your baits, go ahead and click it right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.